The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Lindsay Black, Executive Director of Jody House. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. So, Lindsay, I know Jody House does such important work, and uh, you've been there about a little over three years now. Mm -hmm. And so I know it's growing and doing more and more work. Would you tell us about the work of Jody House these days? Absolutely. Well, we've all been affected by the pandemic. That's undeniable. And prior to the pandemic, Jody House was operating out of our downtown facility on Chapala Street yes, five days a yes, week. Yes. We were operating our day program, which consists of a wide range of classes, everything from yoga to mindfulness meditation to self-defense to support groups. It's really a wide array of programming, but it was only available in person. So as a result of the pandemic, when we were were forced to temporarily suspend our operations, we moved everything online very quickly. And then about a matter of about a week, we were doing our classes online. We were doing our individual case management sessions online. But the beauty of this was it opened up the opportunity to, to participate for so many survivors who otherwise face challenges getting to our physical location. So it's forever changed the nature of our business and our operations. And it's something that we want to ensure we're able to continue providing even when we can get back to whatever the new sense of normalcy will be be as it relates to our physical in-person programming. Yeah, and when you say survivors, survivors of brain injury, is that, that right? That is correct. That's the mission. That's at the heart of our work is to ensure that brain injury survivors in our community are thriving. Not merely surviving, but thriving. And what are those social and emotional supports that are needed mm -hmm. to ensure that they're able to do so? You know, a brain injury can happen to any of us at any time. And I think it's something that we often take for granted, just how fragile life is, how yes, fragile yes. our brains are, you know. Um, I think something that people don't often recognize about Jody House is that we're actually serving brain injury, brain injury survivors of all acquired injuries, so not just traumatic brain injury. Oh. So we have many members who have experienced strokes aneurysms, oh. um, even members who may have had an injury as a result of you know, lingering effects of chemotherapy, having gone through cancer. Oh, gosh. So I've heard it said, you, if you've seen one brain injury, you've seen one brain injury. Yeah. And so for us, it's so critical that we have programming that can be adapted, that's diverse, that can really meet the needs of the survivor um, where they're at. And so it's a very, very unique and special population of people to be working with. And I think that, you know, the more we talk about brain injury and increase awareness in the community, the more often I hear someone say, you know, I, my mother had a stroke and I've, I've noticed that there may be some lingering effects. And yeah. so I just want to impart upon the audience that we're here as a resource. And oftentimes, even if someone doesn't feel that they may be a fit for our day program, for our classes, we're here to provide resources, referrals to other support systems, ah. education about brain injury, oh, signs good. to look for as, mm -hmm. it result, as it relates to injury. So, you know, we really want to be that one comprehensive resource resource in the community for all brain and injury. What about reasons. support for the families and friends, the caretakers? That's a huge component of our work. Um, you know, our, our services are wonderful in that they do provide respite for caregivers during the day. So when we're fully functioning at our facility, we have classes offered from 11 a.m. through 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. But beyond, you know, just providing respite services, we're also working to help caregivers network with one another 
other. Oh, in that's so good. It's so critical. You know, mm -hmm. I think that what happens is the whole family wakes up and someone's experienced a brain injury and life will never be the same again in an instant. And so not only is a survivor left grappling with what this new normal may be, mm -hmm. their caregiver who oftentimes worked or was taking care of kids and all of a sudden they have this new reality where they have somebody who's dependent on them um, to help meet you know, their very, very unique and challenging needs. So they need that support too. Yes. And they need those resources. And so we've also in the past operated caregiver support groups, mm -hmm. which have been really critical for those who have been able to participate. So that's a big part of the work and a big part of the equation as it relates to fulfilling our mission is to yeah. make sure that caregivers are supported in fulfilling, you know, their I like roles. it that you're connecting them to each other because there's so much that's not known. The questions that I bet they're afraid to ask, they don't even know what questions to ask. Absolutely. That's oftentimes where our work comes in is after medical professionals have finished their life-saving work, mm -hmm. the families and the survivors are left with where do we go from here? We don't know what the long-term effects are going to be. Yeah. We don't know what the supports on the other side of the hospital or um, you know, intensive inpatient rehabilitation mm -hmm. are. So the idea is that we're there as a support, but to also help them understand resources that may be helpful mm -hmm. that they may not even know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a staff, and do you use volunteers at all? We do, absolutely. Wow. So when our program's operating within our classes, you can imagine that, again, each survivor has very unique needs. So we mm -hmm. have wonderful volunteer opportunities and that members of the community are able to come in to sit alongside members in our classes and to help assist them. It may be something so simple as during a music class, helping a member who has some physical limitations mm -hmm. turn a sheet, a page of music. Yeah. Um, it may be something like helping a member during current events follow along in their reading as we're discussing articles. Yeah. Uh, we have wonderful members who come in and help with our research. Jody House is one of only six sites in the state of California, actually. Oh, six in the whole state? Well, there are many more sites that work with brain injury survivors, but only six that are supported by the State Department of Rehabilitation. Oh, oh. So as a result of that formal network, we have all committed to collecting uniform data. So the oh. six sites, the sister sites, really support one another. So what's great is that it's pushed us towards being more of an outcomes and metrics driven oh, organization. So we have fabulous research volunteers who come in and who help administer surveys and questionnaires and track progress and make sure that we're able to see that the impact of the, the to see the impact of the work we're doing right because yes. that's what's so critical in informing our work going forward the changes we'll make the modifications to programming and constantly being committed to assessing and reassessing whether a survivor and their family's needs are being met through our programming because it's a lifelong commitment we're making to help yeah. someone yep, on yep, that yep. journey that is yeah. so, so wonderful. So if someone is interested in volunteering, they can go on your website and find out more about it? Absolutely, www.jodihouse, J-O-D-I-H-O-U-S-E dot org, or they can call our main line, which is 805-563-2882. That is wonderful. And speaking of your website, um, you're a nonprofit, 501c3, and so I bet on the website there's a donate now there button. is so people can donate financially as well as be giving their time and I think it's really important for people to understand that more than 80% of the survivors we work with are low to very low income oh. many of them would not without Jody house have access to continued supports for their ongoing recovery and rehabilitation and that's really a shame because when we look at the lifelong effects even just the costs alone for somebody who's left on the other side of their injury with little to no supports mm -hmm. it can be astronomical um, you know, unfortunately, people with brain injury have greater rates of homelessness, mm. of mental illness, of substance use issues. Um, we, we know these things to be true. We see it in the members we work with each and every day. And so this idea that we can build this fabric of support and help them through a lot of these issues they're facing as they're feeling more isolated yeah. and not like their former selves. It's really, really critical to ensuring better outcomes, not just for them, but for the entire community. Yeah, that is, 
That is such important work that you're doing. And I hope that people do go on the website and donate and also choose to volunteer. It sounds like there's a lot of great things to do. And it sounds like some of the volunteer opportunities are specific, like the research ones that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Whereas others can be just somebody who wants to sit and help. Absolutely. And that's something that's so critical to our model at Jody House. It's not that the instructors leading the classes or the staff are the experts from which all knowledge is disseminated, <laughs> right, right. right? It's yeah. this idea of peer support, and that was what we were founded upon. This notion that people, through their own lived experiences, can relate to one another in a way that you know maybe just one instructor cannot. So there's such an exchange of information and so much power happening in what those survivors themselves are sharing with one another. So it's really yeah. amazing to see. It's a really special community to be a part of. And so I absolutely encourage anyone who doesn't know anything about our program, go online, learn more, come visit us. Yeah, come we're, visit. We're right downtown, so. One time, it's been a few years ago now, but one time I attended an event um, at Jody House and it was for families and survivors and people, it was outside, picnic tables. People were really enjoying just making that connection with each other. You know, it's interesting as you're speaking of that event, I'm thinking back to the founding of Jody House. We've been in the Santa Barbara community for almost 40 years now. 40, wow. We... I, and the impetus for the start of our program was our namesake, Jody, was 19 years old. She was a college student, tragically got struck by a drunk driver crossing the street. She suffered a very severe traumatic brain injury, and her family really, really struggled to find supports for her. They saw her sinking deeper and deeper into mm. isolation, depression, oh, yeah. withdrawing. You know, she would have friends who would come over and leave and say things like, we'd like to remember her the way she was. Mm. Well, this was her new normal. This was their new normal. Right, so right. they banded together with the families of other survivors of brain injury. And in those early days, it was very informal. It was living room meetups. It yeah. was you know, trips to the bowling alley. And then there was this groundswell around this idea that there were not sufficient resources that existed for brain injury survivors in this community. And how do we change that? How do we formalize this program? Mm -hmm. So they led bake sales. It was, mm -hmm. I mean, it really was a grassroots story. Yeah. It's an amazing story and for, all of that work to have transpired and to get us to where we are today, I, you know, I'm very proud of that. And, and you should be, yeah. 40 years though, I had no idea you've been around for that long. 40 years, no. It's Gosh, it'd be, it'd be so fun to hear the stories of some of the survivors as well as the family members who are so grateful for the services. Absolutely. I mean, the stories every day just are such a good reminder of why we do the work we do. And it's interesting. I was thinking about something I'd want to share for those who aren't as you know knowledgeable about brain injury, who don't know anybody necessarily with the brain injury. And something that's so important to know is that brain injury is often an invisible disability. Yes. So the survivor may very well not exhibit any symptoms or indication that they're experiencing an internal injury. Mm -hmm. And so I just, what I always want to impart upon people is just to be kind and carry that compassion and empathy for everybody you meet. Because as one member recently shared with me, um, although he doesn't have physical symptoms, he can get caught up when he's doing his day-to-day -day errands, when he's trying to count change at the store. His processing speed was very dramatically impacted mm. by his injury and people will get frustrated with him right. and oh. he can sense that and mm. it increases his anxiety oh. it makes him uncomfortable it makes him feel scared to be out there in the community and that's exactly what we're trying to mitigate is those yes, feelings yes, yes. of anxiety or social isolation um, you know there's another member he's lovely he's a grandfather and he was with his granddaughter at the park recently and she was playing and he was watching her from afar and there were a few other mothers and it wasn't necessarily clear and apparent to them that he happened to be with his granddaughter there so they oh went up God. and out of protection for their own family they they said are, are you here with someone sir like who is your child 
And this poor man, he has dysphagia as a result of his brain injury. Oh. And he often has a hard time forming his words and finding his words. And so the added anxiety rendered him in a position where he had a really tough time communicating, oh. even that it was his granddaughter he was watching on the playground. So that's just, that's heartbreaking, these stories. Yes. So again, it's just this idea to proceed with empathy and compassion for all those you meet. You just don't know what Isn't they're dealing that, oh, with. So gosh. after that happened, Jody house we decided we were going to do a workshop where everyone could make a survivor ID card so in the event that this oh. ever happened again some type of you know oh, interaction pull that out of his pocket out so people could understand a little oh. bit more about maybe why he wasn't appearing as you know normal and um, oh. I just you know, that, that's those great. stories really pull on your heartstrings yeah. though so have you now made those cards and you give them out? Uh, our survivors have their cards they carry with them in the event that it's helpful, which, you know, sometimes it can be. Think about something like a routine traffic stop or, again, just a challenge like making change at the grocery store, just yeah. to give people a little bit more patience and understanding as yeah. to why some of these day-to-day -day functions may be more challenging for a survivor. So I would imagine Jody House collaborates with other organizations and absolutely and well you know as I'd mentioned before it's like you've seen one injury you've seen one injury so as a result of these injuries people's needs and the challenges they face are all so diverse and with a greater disproportion um, of the population affected by things like homelessness and yeah. substance use disorders and mental health issues. We have to collaborate very closely with other providers. And so often we get calls from other organizations in town and they say, look, we have this patient or we have this member and they don't quite fit within the box or the parameters of our target population, mm -hmm. if you will. And we don't know if they have a brain injury, but we suspect they might. And so we oftentimes are a great resource for other program providers who maybe suspect that someone they're working with has a brain injury. And that so often is really the root cause of a lot of other symptoms and behaviors that we're seeing or that other groups are working yeah. to affect. So those partnerships are critical. You know, our members, I think people are oftentimes surprised to learn that 40% of Jody House's members live, continue to live independently despite mm. their injury. And so for us to be able to support them in that mm -hmm. requires close collaboration with the yeah. City Housing Authority, um, mm -hmm. you know, with the Section 8 vouchers, getting those, mm -hmm. um, working with landlords, um, you know, just all kinds of processes, paperwork, things that feel overwhelming to just yeah, anybody. Yeah. Now, can you imagine compounding that with a brain injury? So that's part of the work we're doing. In the medical community too, I would imagine imagine and social service and absolutely with the neurologists who are yeah. often referring patients to mm -hmm. our program collaborating with them the yeah. neuropsychiatrists who are often able to further yeah. help our members with their behavioral wellness needs transportation just getting oh. to and from the program I mean yeah. a lot of different barriers that people with brain injury are facing gosh that's so. that's an amazing work that you're doing so we have a couple minutes left is there anything else that you'd want to be sure that our our uh, viewers learn I just want to underscore the importance of the awareness of Jody House and our programs. And I hear it often said that people don't know about us mm -hmm. until they need us. Yeah. And I want to change that. I want people to know in their minds and their hearts that if ever this were to happen to them, if it were to happen to a loved one, there is a safe place for them to come, a place that will embrace them, that will help them reintegrate into the community, and that will be there to support them ongoing yeah. through their recovery and rehabilitation. So where medical care may end that's where Jody House picks up and oh, we're here that's a good we're here that's for a everyone. very good way to say it yeah and so you know how can we get what is your vision for the future of Jody House in this community our vision is that no one would have to face brain injury alone that's what we want to ensure you know there are that's so many people vision. And it's my hope. There's so much isolation that can happen as a result of yeah. having this life-changing injury and waking up the next day and knowing that you're not yourself and feeling as if everyone around you is looking at you, hoping that you're going to be your former self. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And so for people to be able to come together and again, have that shared lived experience mm -hmm. and share those feelings, those frustrations, and really own and reclaim their lives as who they are today, not who they used to be, yeah. is so important to ensuring 
the, their ultimate success and health and wellness. Yeah, that's a beautiful vision and an yeah. important one for our community. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Senator. I've just really enjoyed pleasure. listening to all the work that you're doing these days. And thank you for all the good work you're doing in our community. Absolutely. We couldn't do it without the community. So yeah. thank you, everyone, for your support. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.